Okay, so we're going to look at some multivariable calculus today, and we're going to try and take the Gatto differential of this functional here, which is boundaries are A and B, and with regards to X, we've got 2Y prime squared over X squared. And then the Gatto differential, this is the t uh, no, uh, no, notation for it. And our functional here is can be seen as a function of x, y which is a function of x, and y prime which is a function of x. Note I put the dx inside right next to the integral sign here rather than at the back because what I want to do is have everything here nice and clear that that's what I'm working with. Whereas if the dx is at the back, I'm not too keen on that, I prefer that there. But if you want to put it out back, feel free. And the Gatto differential is used by this formula. So Gatto, so delta S Y comma H. So H is also a function that we are interested in. And for it to be an all admissible function, um, we need this to be equal to zero. And it leads on to the Euler Lagrange equation, stuff like that. So we'll move on to that into another video. But for today, for today, we're just interested in the Gatto differential. So the Gatto differential is the derivative with regards to epsilon of this functional s of y plus epsilon h and then we take the limit as epsilon approaches zero. So okay, first place to start is to achieve this part. So I want our functional here s of y plus epsilon h. Basically what that means is wherever we see a y we need to add epsilon h into the functional. So the uh, uh, integration points to stay the same, a and b, and it's still with regards to x. And then we've got 2y prime squared. So now keep that on as the fraction, bring the 2 out front. So then we've got y prime. Now even though this says only a y plus epsilon h, when it's a y prime, we add y prime plus epsilon h prime. So we need to put the epsilon h prime in there. And again, this is still squared. And then we divide that by x squared. So x squared is, is independent of the y. So we can just leave that as it is. Okay. So next stage, we want to take the derivative with regards to epsilon. So derivative with regards to epsilon, we can write this way. So epsilon is independent of the x, so we can bring the derivative inside the functional. So derivative with regards to epsilon of s y plus epsilon h, that equals a b, parameters stay the same, dx, now this x squared, I'm just going to write this as x to the minus 2 up here. Or I could put it out front here actually. So I'm going to write the x to the minus 2, because that's nothing to do with the epsilon h, so that can just stay out the side. And then we can use the chain rule here. So bring the 2 out front. So we've got 4, so I'll put a little sign, multiply sign there just to make sure that's separate. So 4. And then y prime plus epsilon h prime. And then with the chain rule, take the derivative with regards to epsilon of the inside, which is going to leave us with another h prime. Okay. So that's where we're up to now. So that's the uh, differentiation with regards to epsilon. Now we need to take the limit as epsilon equals zero. So basically all that means is it's just typing, uh, putting zero for epsilon. So this bit here will become zero. So now we need to do is just simplify this functional here. So now we can write our Gatto differential, y comma h equals, so from a to b and the dx, that stays the same. All we've got to do now is simplify this so the 4, which is a constant multiple, let's deal with this first, we'll come to the x minus 2 in a minute. 4 can come out front, that's just a multiple, that's just as in normal. 
and then we've got the y prime h prime so we've got y prime h prime and then the x squared can come back and go into the denominator so that basically is our gatto differential okay